I yurt! I yurt! I yurt! I'm so excited! If you guys can kind of see my boob, I apologize if that offends you. Chris and I are in Glendale. I'm wearing the same shirt as I wore yesterday to film all of my Instagram videos, so, you know, whatevs. Whatevs. <laughs> Rent the runway. I like it. It is rather low cut, but there's a string that you can scrunch. Oh, a lot of you guys were asking me where this necklace comes from, and by a lot of you, I think four. My friend Samantha actually gave this to me for Christmas, and I know where she got it, so I will link it in the description box. I will try and be better about linking things I talk about or wear in my vlogs. I'm just really bad at it. By the time I get the video done and uploaded, I'm like, ah, it has to go live. Try and be better. One day, I will be able to have someone help me with all that. But right now, it's just me. It's just me. A few moments later. I am so excited. We just booked our camping trip. <laughs> We're living in a yurt! <laughs> I didn't even know what a yurt was. There was a tent option. I was like, oh look, this is... This. <laughs> <laughs> Let's upgrade to a yurt. And Chris is like, what the fuck what is a yurt? yurt? It sounds awful. And I was like, how do you not know what a yurt is? And he's like, do you know what a yurt is? I'm like, yes, because I watch people who live in yurts. Because when you watch van life and tiny home videos, inevitably you're gonna see a yurt. A yurt. <laughs> I didn't decide. We we're gonna upgrade even further to stay at the small cabin, which would have had a kitchenette and your own private bathroom. But when we saw the photos of what a yurt looked like, it's gonna be good content. What about that? I just think it's so exciting. And there is a bathroom, so as long as yeah. like I can walk to it, it's fine. Although if I have to pee in the middle of the night, you're coming with me. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. Electricity, there's Wi-Fi hotspots at the pool and at the market, and it's like glamping. We're also looking at a trailer park of vintage trailers. And that looked adorable. That looked cool. It just this one looked like there was more to do. Like, and they have a llama hike. Honestly, let's be honest, that's why we're just going to this one. We're going to document all of it, so make sure you're subscribed. City girl who has only gone camping once in my entire life, have, uh, I'm going camping! I'll do a keto cooking outside on the grill video. Oh yeah, because I'm still cutting. I don't know how I'm going to do that. It'd be easy. I'm so excited! the next day. So I just had a really productive and interesting meeting. I have her book, I'm gonna read it. Uh, probably when we're camping, cause that's like the perfect time to read. What are I'm we camping so in? A yurt, <laughs> a yurt, a yurt! I'm so excited. We're staying in a yurt, although Serena's terrified of going to the bathroom <laughs> while we're camping. I keep bringing it up, I was not a very much outdoorsy nature person. I've gone camping once my entire life for one night only with my <laughs> senior class ASB. It was like a bonding thing and I had to show up way late because I had rehearsals for a play and then we left the next morning and I slept in a truck bed. So I tried sleeping in the tent and I was like this isn't working so I hopped in the truck bed. <laughs> yeah! I texted my friend Sarah and I was like, hey Sarah, do you have a cooler we can borrow? We're going camping in a yurt. She said, you're going camping, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Staying in a yurt. And then she's like, what is a yurt? And then I wrote back, I sent her a photo of a yurt. And then I was like, I'm very concerned that both Chris, who grew up in the wild, <laughs> and you, who go camping and like grew up camping, don't know what a yurt is, but I do. Means I probably watch way too many tiny home and van life videos. Yeah, when I was growing up, you either slept in a sleeping bag, like out under the stars, or you got a tent. Like that was just how it went. The yurt. <laughs> I'm not Although the yurt looks dope as Can we pick the yurt because the cabin was not aesthetically pleasing enough? It wasn't compared to the yurt. Chris was very like all about me getting more comfort and having our own private bathroom and kitchenette, especially since I'll be on week six of my keto cut. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I'm okay spending a little more getting the small cabin if that's what you want. But the small cabin doesn't have a queen bed. It has two twin beds. Yeah. We're married. Just, it looked basic. <laughs> 
and Chris was like, what do you want, convenience? Or, cause the year I'm worried, the bathroom's like not there. It's, it doesn't really have anything. It's just a bed in a yurt on a platform. And I was like, look, here's my issue. We're going there for, as a vacation, but we're also going there to film content and shoot photos. I just think the yurt is more pretty <laughs> for photos. Pulled up a photo of the yurt at night with the picnic bench in front. Let's go. And Chris was like, okay, we're getting the yurt. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do an ASMR cooking over the fire, cooking over the open fire. Well, you're gonna have to make all my food for, we have to portion out my food and, make, and bring it. I'm really excited. I'm so excited for this trip. We're leaving in a week and a half and I'm already like, hey guys, I'm going on a yurt. <laughs> My brother's in Africa. I felt the rain down in Africa. Time to do the thing. He's left today to go to Africa. He's climbing Mount Machu Picchu. <laughs> and I always get it confused with the one in Peru. Which is So I keep thinking it's Kilimanjaro, but it's Machu Picchu, right? Or is it vice versa? No, my brother's going to the one in Africa. That's Kilimanjaro. I keep telling people he's going to the one at Machu Picchu, which is in Peru. Yeah. Many hours later. I just got home and ate a ton of food. Not a ton. It, it wasn't really that big. It was a lot for me because I fasted till 4 p.m. So didn't stop eating until like almost 11 p.m. last night. Chris and I stopped by the Goodwill because I wanted to see if I could thrift a flannel for our upcoming glamping trip. I try not to buy clothes, as you guys know. For our trip, we're gonna have to get a couple new items. Goodwill, we scored. Impromptu thrift haul. Chris found these and they're like brand freaking new. They're boxing gloves. He has a pair and I have a really nice pair from home we both did our thing. Now that we have a spare pair, $3.99. If you guys know how much boxing gloves are, that's a ridiculous deal. It's brand new, it doesn't smell or anything. We got a bunch of flannel, actually we just got two. So I got this flannel, cause I thought it looked really cute and aesthetic. This I felt like was kind of expensive. Let me know, this is LA for us. Like everything's just a little bit more expensive even when it comes to Goodwill. This was $6.49. Is that expensive for a flannel? I mean, it's pretty worn too, but in a good way because I wanted it to be worn. I just found this for himself. This is the, I don't know what brand this is, but it is also $6.49. And this looks really good against his eyes and coloring. I thought it was really cute, so I'm gonna wash that for him as well. I got a bunch of shirts because I wanted to crop some shirts. This one I thought was really cute for myself and I was gonna crop it to go with my cutoffs. I like the color, I think it's a really fun color. Um, this was $1.99. Chris saw this and he's like, if you crop this, I think it looks so cute on you. So this was 99 cents. And then Chris scored by finding this t-shirt. This is $1.99. It's from Urban Pipeline. It's a small, it looks like it's gonna fit him perfectly. And there's no armpit stains or anything like that. Those are some of the things we look for when we look at reused clothes because I really like this tie-dye and I thought it was kind of funny with the Savage but I'm gonna try and make this into a tank top and this was a dollar ninety nine so that's what we got at Goodwill there's still a couple items that I want to get I want to try and get one more flannel I want to get a tablecloth for the picnic bench and tables that we're gonna have access to. I would also like to get a lantern and we need a pot to cook certain things in. We're gonna bring our cast iron. I already have reusable utensils and straws and cups. Um, and then we're gonna try and borrow a cooler from my friend Sarah, possibly some other things. And then we are pretty much good to go. I'm so excited we got the confirmation. There's gonna be one main vlog, but we might have time to create some other videos as well. If there's certain content that you would like about camping or glamping about our trip other than a vlog documenting it, let me know now so I can plan that content for when we go next week. I'm so excited. The next day. Good morning. 
focus. Just got back from the gym and out of the shower. But since I was talking about thrifting and like sustainable fashion in this vlog, I wanted to show you one of the sustainable bra brands I have found. If you guys can kind of see my boob, I apologize if that offends you, but most of us are women and I feel like this is something that we should talk about because I'm a 32D. I've had the hardest time finding a non-wire but supportive, sustainable, ethically sourced fabric brand for bras. This is the Laura Intimates Ren Bra. They make each bra to fit. What they do to keep it sustainable is that for each bra that is custom ordered, based on the sizing, they give you very specific charts on how to measure yourself. They make two of each bra ordered, which lets them have a small inventory of popular sizes. All of the fabrics that Laura Intimates uses is dead stock. There are six women who work in-house at Laura Intimates making these bras to order. One issue about this is that you're gonna have to wait about six weeks if they need to make you a bra. I'm explaining about my boobies. Your what? I'm explaining about my bra. I was trying to scare Cooper for barking at me. Not only are they sustainably sourcing their fabrics, paying ethical wages to women who actually are in-house sewing all of the pieces and constructing all of the pieces, but they make sure that your entire boob is actually supported without any of the harsh underwire, any harsh cutting in. I've just been so in love with this bra that I'm going to also place an order for the other one that's more of a thinner strap. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I can also make it a racer back. This one is the Ren bra. I absolutely love it. I love how it actually covers my boob. Now, a lot of times people think that they have boob fat or armpit fat, and it's not true. It's just larger chested women like us, like anyone with like a D cup or higher, the boob usually ends up spilling out and it makes us look bigger than we actually are. This bra actually makes me look thinner in my clothes because it properly fits me. Shapes the boob, whereas sometimes um, it either, if it doesn't push my boobs like all the way up to my chin, it ends up making me look saggy or flat. Fabric is very lightweight, very breathable, very easy to care for and wash. And that's what it looks like in the back. So really gorgeous. And there is a matching set of undies. I'm just not wearing that because it's completely sheer and I didn't want to show you guys that on camera. Just love this bra. If you're looking for a custom fit bra, which I didn't do for the longest time and I was wearing the wrong bra for many, many years until I finally realized my size. But then after I realized my size, I realized how hard it was to actually find bras that fit properly. Love that Laura Intimates essentially custom builds your bra for you. It's totally worth the weight and the investment. It's just incredible that the bra industry is really predominantly run by men and bras are being made and designed by men. There's only like a handful of people in this world that know how to properly construct a bra and it hasn't been innovated in decades. Baffles my mind. I've never been so comfortable as I have been in this bra. So to share it with you guys after wearing it for I've had it for about a month now, so I thought it was a good proper review. I do have a link to them, so check out the link in the description box if you want to order your bra. Let, let them know I sent you, and they, it is coming from the UK, but they ship internationally. And let me know when you get your bra what you think of it as well. I measured myself. It turned out fine. That might offend people. <laughs> I'm still red from my workout. I also wanted to show you guys this. So these sneakers, which you know Chris got me for Christmas as a surprise, they kind of pinch back here. So what I like to do is I use these amazing made for women. These are, I believe they're pronounced form, form A. There's the brand. But what you can do is like these help expand your shoes or keep them in their shape. And then this part back here helps with the heel and this way my shoes like always ready to go but these also help keep the shape of your shoes they're actually made for female shoes and these were designed with like designer expensive shoes in mind so you can put these in and not worry about it I really like those and I thought it was like a neat little thing that most of us don't know about because I didn't know about it I just kind of suffered through and had blisters we don't have to
I gotta go. I've got a facial to do. Two days later. And that's another week. I wanted to hop on here and kind of share with you a little bit of my intuitive spending. Since the beginning of this no buy, low buy, and now intuitive spending journey, I've had a laptop, a camera, and an iPad on my wish list, as well as personal savings goals, business savings goals. I also had a lot of things that were just materialistic items. And while I'm saying that my electronic items aren't as materialistic because they make me more functional and productive, I definitely have to say that my attachment to these things that I wanted on my wish list, I've crossed out a lot of. And it's not that I don't want them, it's it's just they're not my priority right now. One thing I've really noticed through this journey is that my priorities really have shifted, not just in like logic and knowing that I shouldn't buy these things, but in terms of what I want and what I value. And I really want to just spend more time enjoying my life in all aspects of feeling healthier, feeling good from the inside out, taking time and going on a vacation, even if it's just two days with Chris, even though it's a working vacation and we're creating content. A lot of things have changed. This wish list was started around the time I decided I was going to do a no buy. I wanted to have a personal savings goal. I wanted to have a business operating expenses in, on reserve goal, and I wanted to be completely debt free. I'm not 100% debt free. We're in a much better position than I was with my excessive spending more importantly like the mindless spending I wanted to get a MacBook Pro to be able to work and be more efficient on the go I had a new iPad because mine broke and I was using Chris's which was older than mine which was both very old it finally got to a point where my iPad or Chris's iPad no longer supported the updates of the apps I was using the apps were too old for it to work. So the app would not work unless I updated, but the updates would not work with my iPad. That's how old it was. After like a lot of hemming and hawing and being like, should I spend this money or save and get the laptop or should I get this iPad Pro that I've been eyeing and thinking about and can pretty much make me just as productive. The only thing I can't really do on it is edit full YouTube videos. I went and looked at it and I got it. So this was my big, big purchase this entire year. This was the biggest purchase that wasn't like a necessity, even though it kind of can be justified as one. This is like a bonus and a grateful thing to have in my life. Be able to work on the go, answer emails a little more efficiently on the go, be able to plan a lot of things inspiration wise and write out shot lists and all these things that go on behind actually creating the content. It's just been really awesome. It was really, really hard for me to make that purchase. I was recently watching Hannah's video about her June budget and how she realized that she was being obsessive. I'm trying to kind of do a crash course of financial health in a year. Definitely have made huge strides. I feel like a better person. I feel like my priorities are a lot better than where it began. I get what she's saying. There's this obsessiveness to be perfect there's this need to do do it right even though there's no right or wrong way it's just about self-growth and self-development and understanding where our habits come from and our mental um stability and needs and kind of our mental state when needing or wanting to spend and recognizing those things it dawned on me that I should just let it go. I bought it. It was on my wish list for over a year. I never could buy it because I was spending all this money on random things that I couldn't tell you what I was spending on. Whereas this, I actually use literally multiple times a day. It's made me more organized in terms of creating content. It's helping me become more inspired with creating content. It's making me more efficient. I also find joy and pleasure out of it from having my Kindle app on here, having my Calm app on here, and being able to watch Hulu, Netflix, and things like that when I want a little bit of a break. It's very multifunctional. It's not a spur of the moment purchase. It's not a new handbag. It's not a new pair of shoes. I was obsessing over this and then I was watching Hannah's video. She's right, like I need to just 
trust myself a little bit more. This was not a spur of the moment purchase. This was not a stupid purchase. This was not a purchase that was mindlessly thought of. I was never gonna feel okay about buying something this expensive during this year because it's been very challenging for me to purchase things. That's the big purchase this week. And then we did buy stuff like I showed you in our Goodwill haul. Chris paid for all of that and it was about $20. I'm gonna tell you some of the other stuff on my wish list. I had had this brand new camera that I'd been eyeing with these really expensive lenses, which I still want. To be honest, we can't afford as a business right now. That whole new camera and setup is gonna cost us at least three to $5,000 because cameras and lenses and the equipment that goes with it is very expensive. I ended up getting a refurbished older model with some cheaper lenses that do the job. I don't think you guys notice. Obviously, at some point when the business can afford it, I definitely would like to get those cameras and lenses. But right now, I'm happy and I'm able to create the content I want to create. And actually, it forces me to be a little more creative and kind of like Jimmy rig things, which is totally fine at the place I'm at right now. I would like to get a monopod, which is like a stick to help kind of stabilize the camera for on the go shooting. That's not super expensive. It's just not something we've like purchased yet. I still kind of want a new Chloe bag, but I haven't been loving their latest designs lately. So I haven't crossed it out officially, but I also haven't purchased it and it's not anywhere in the foreseeable future of me purchasing this handbag. I did cross out my Lady Dior bag. That bag was like my lust worthy next bag to have, my dream bag. And while it'd be nice to have and I still would like it, it's not anywhere in my near future. There's a lot of other things I would like to do. Uh, the Louis Vuitton makeup bag is still on my list. Again, I haven't crossed it out because I still would like to treat myself to it at some point. Probably not this year. I'm okay with that. Eyeshadow I wanted from Chanel, that's been crossed out because I really don't need to spend money on eyeshadow right now. Necklace I wanted from Pamela Card, the Aphrodite necklace. That's still on my list, but honestly, I'm okay with not having it. And there's other things I want more in terms of jewelry. I actually want to get hoops for my three piercings more than I want the necklace. Only E Oso number 10 in T Rose. That's been on my wish list for a while and maybe I'll pick it up one day, but I just, I'm okay with leaving it there. I did cross out my late custom palette because at this time I just don't need to spend money on purchasing a whole custom palette for the person that I think I'm gonna be. I need to use up more of my products and continue to test the products coming in, which is my job. The Charlotte Tilbury, the Sophisticate, Sophisticate Eye Palette, I wanted, but I crossed off because I realized I have like four or five Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes and I love them all, so there's no reason to like get another one and to like put a little more of a dent in the ones I already love. Something that's been on my list that I really want and still want are the Doc Martens Jaden Jadon. Now that's been on my list since the beginning of this wish list and it hasn't lessened. The only reason I still haven't bought them is now it's summer and it's kind of hot, but I think for fall that is something I'm going to treat myself to. And then I need a new can opener that's preferably all metal. So I've been looking when I go into thrift stores to see if I can just thrift it. But if not, I might just end up buying our home a can opener at some point. I would really like some baggy jeans, like a boyfriend fit that are comfy but still flattering. That's something I'm saving now at this point for fall. Um, short overalls, that was something I was hoping to thrift, but it's not something I'm willing to spend like a ton of money on. Brow tint, which ended up, you know, I didn't need anymore because I started dyeing my brows thanks to Mel one of my viewers. So she sent me the this thousand hour brow tint, which I'm obsessed with. And then I still would like to treat our home to new pillows, new comforter, and new sheets at some point, but you know, not really on the huge priority list right now because they are really expensive. I wanna buy ethical, sustainably sourced materials, um, ethical wages, and like really good quality premium sheets, pillows, and comforter but what we have now is fine I did end up getting my compostable phone case wolford bodysuit i'm really saving that for fall at this point third ear piercing which i ended up getting for free um a few vlogs ago any hoops for my piercings that is something i really want to look for like good quality ones my friend b ended up getting me a saute pan 
Um, actually, no, it's a cast iron, but that's what I meant. Still need a steamer and saucepan and still need a new spatula. Our spatula is getting to that point where it's like chipping and the plastic and metal are showing and that makes me a little nervous that we're still cooking with it. I did end up getting my Nisola Serena sandals, the daily planner journal. That was like the first thing I got on this wish list. I did end up getting the woven cotton shoulder bag from Netta Porte, which you saw in my spring capsule wardrobe. And I did end up spending money on the e.l.f. J. Kissa collection and the Essence highlighter. You know, I don't feel guilty about most of the per these purchases. The only thing that I ended up kind of feeling a little guilty about for a while was this. And Chris was kind of like, you don't seem that excited that you finally got your iPad. I thought you were gonna, like your reaction was gonna be of more joy. What really happened was that I felt so guilty for spending this much money, even though we discussed it at nauseam. Hannah's video really made me realize like I need to stop obsessing so much because in order for me to grow and become more full is not only to not spend money, have that self-control and have a better relationship realizing when spending money it shouldn't come from a place of boredom, sadness, celebration, or need to f fill a void, but that it's okay to spend money and enjoy my purchases without feeling guilty at the same time. So that's what I have to leave you guys with this week in my update of my low buy journey. At this point, intuitive spending, that's the word I would use with eating, where I have to put myself on a more restrictive diet currently with keto and then doing the keto cut, really focusing on the right nutritional values for my body and taking away the ability to emotionally eat. By taking away emotional spending, I was emotionally eating again. Not healthy either. So I have to like take these things away and then add it back into my life and realize the habits I have and how to deal with them and what these emotions are. Find a better way to deal with all these feelings than eating or spending, then bringing food back in and bringing spending back in and not feeling guilty and finding a good balance. Clearly, I'm very excited about going camping, creating content for you guys, so let me know what you like to see. And don't forget, to check back every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for new videos. I will, of course, be doing some bonus uploads because I just have so many videos I'm working on. I want you guys to see it. So thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you guys back here on Wednesday. Possibly Monday for a Makeup Bag Monday or Shop My Stash. I'm thinking about bringing that back. Follow me on Instagram for updates.